Brett Reason graduated from INSEAD in 1994 and worked as a consultant for A.T. Carney. In 2003, he set up the Overseas Vote Foundation to help Americans outside the U.S. register to vote. He later worked for the Clinton Global Initiative in Asia and now represents the United Nations World Food Programme in China. Welcome to Alumni Experience, Brett. A lot of people would look at your job for the World Food Programme and think that was incredibly cool. But what do you actually, what do, you actually do all day? Uh, there's a couple of different versions of this. Uh, the formal version is I'm, I'm effectively the ambassador of the World Food Programme to the Chinese government. So I represent the World Food Programme's global interests to the government, to high net worth donors in China, to private sector donors. I run a small team there uh, that reaches out. Um, we target different donors. We target different opportunities. Uh, we have extensive relationships that we've formed with the mainly African embassies and focusing a lot on the China-Africa angle in terms of really having China take, uh, take its experience and how do you genuinely apply it. The informal way of describing what I do is I'm a professional beggar. And, uh, and I, I mean that genuinely in terms of, of asking people for money. A lot of people see a big divide between the, the kind of commercial sector and your humanitarian sector. What do you think? I'll be the devil's advocate and say no. Uh, I find that the actual gulf between the private sector and the public sector is actually much smaller than we perceive. Uh, the same types of skills that I would use working for Mato Transport or for AT Kearney or for the startups that I had, um, the venture capital firms, the, almost exactly the same set of skills are being used in my life today as a, as a humanitarian, um, working in the development world, budgeting, finance, what's the return on the investment. Uh, right now, for example, we're looking at uh, online marketing in the Philippines and a digital strategy to do outreach, to build a brand, uh, to have people action on that knowledge or awareness of the brand, uh, to have a contingency plan ready for the next disaster. Now, I could be talking about a food product. I know some very talented people who found it really quite hard to break into the, the nonprofit world. How do you persuade insiders that you can fit in and contribute? Uh, I, had the, I had the same challenge going in, uh, and I, I tried for two years knocking on doors, I mean really aggressively tried to, to find a position in the nonprofit world and nobody wanted an MBA. Nobody was interested, you can't relate to what we do, et cetera, et cetera. And so I, I do think that something that was really valuable for me in that crossing that bridge was in the first interviews when you're there to actually have stories that they can relate to. To me, I think that made a big difference because if you come in as a for-profit person and you say, I'm going to save the world and you can use all of my skills right now, um, I think you'll be, I think you should have the door shut in your face because the people who are doing these things are often very talented as well. What's wrong with saying that you want to save the world? Isn't that actually why people want to do humanitarian work? I think saying, going from a for-profit to non-profit and saying, I just want to save the world with all my skills and aren't you shouldn't you should be grateful to be receiving me i think it's the same thing as someone interviewing at goldman sachs and saying uh they say why do you want the money uh, or why why do you want this job and your answer is i just love money and they ask you debt capital markets equity capital markets pe uh, uh what what are you interested in investment banking i don't care i just love the money and I think from the humanitarian or development side, that's what it sounds like when a business person comes in and says, I just want to save the world. Because you've got someone who's been so dedicated to a cause, be it HIV or the elderly or the handicapped or the environment, there's such a broad range. The, the humanitarian social sector is 10% of the U.S. GDP. This is not a small sector, and it has hugely diversified interests in it. And if you go into someone so generally, and as opposed to being interested in what they're interested in, um, you're, you're not going to get nowhere. But I don't find that inconsistent from the private sector either. What's the trick then? How, how does someone with an MBA get their foot in the door? First is you have to be specific in terms of what you're interested in. They talk about passion and being passionate about stuff. But what do you want to spend 9 to 5 or 9 to 9 every day doing? 
And if it's not something that you really, really care about, you're not going to have, uh, you're not going to be interested in it, and you're probably not going to do that well. The best way to find out what you're interested in, volunteering. And if you're not able to keep up a volunteering schedule of a couple hours a week, that's a pretty good indicator that you really don't care about that area as much as, uh, as maybe as much as you need to. And then the third piece is really the, the segue in for most of the people in for-profit or with an MBA uh, is everybody in nonprofit thinks you know how to raise money. I think that's absolutely inaccurate because I would say most people in the for-profit world are not very good at raising money. But if you actually use that as the segue, as you use that as the, as the bridge to get into an organization, um, that's what they believe. It may be a misconception, uh, but uh, if you haven't been raising money yet, um, this would be probably a good time to start if you're interested in entering that sector. Let's talk about raising money. Um, lots of people with an MBA are more comfortable with sort of strategy PowerPoint than actually with asking people for things. How, how do you raise money? I have absolutely no discomfort asking for money for something I believe in. And I believe in what the World Food Program's doing to a point where I still have tears when I see some of the videos. It's probably a little bit crazy. But when you start talking about educating kids or getting them in schools, using nutrition to get them into schools and convince their parents to send them, or the first thousand days of life in terms of the impact that that has on societies, not just an individual, but on a society. I believe in this. And I believe in this so strongly that for me, I think I'm actually doing somebody a favor when I'm, I'm providing them with a service that they desperately need, maybe as much as the person on the other end who's gonna be the recipient. I actually think I'm doing a service that may be even more valuable to the person who has the money. Uh, because they really would like to do something that's compassionate, and they just often don't know how.